Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. Today we are going to see if I can weave this shit. We're gonna talk about this in a second. First, I want to show you. The other night I made a rope using my 32 notch loom using 16 strands of embroidery thread. What I ended up getting out of that video was a little rope like this that has what they call a diamond pattern. I can barely see the diamond, but those little flecks of green I think would look more diamond shape if I used something bigger than embroidery thread. Embroidery thread, it's nice. It has a nice feel to it. But I'm telling you, it was a tedious task on this loom. After that, I tried a heart-shaped one. And I was going to do the video on that one, but I think that the design, it looks too much the same. Again, I think those little pink flecks would probably look, hmm, let's see, let's turn it this way. I think they would probably look more heart-shaped if the cord was bigger, but there's really so little difference between the two that I'm not going to bother showing you the video for the heart-shaped one. But what I am going to show you very quick, if you want to set up your loom to try the heart-shaped one, this is the setup. You'll remember by watching the video previous, so if you don't know anything about this, go watch the previous video. I will have the playlist link in the description box, in the comments, and on the end screen. This is how you would set up your loom. You would want your main color for the bracelet to be where I have all the dark blue, and then you would want your color that would make the little hearts be these three spots. So that's really all I'm going to say about that particular bracelet. I'm just showing you how you would set it up. You would weave in the exact same motion as in the previous video. But what we're going to do today is try to weave this shit. This is polypropylene twine that I picked up at Dollar Tree for a buck. I think a dollar for three whole big spools of stuff is a very good price. I think it might be a little stiff to work with. I don't know. It's definitely bigger than the embroidery thread. So we are going to give it a try and experiment with it. I am going to show you first the pattern that we will be doing today. Since I don't have a color printer because I have a laser printer, I can't just print it out and show you. So I'm going to take you over to my computer and show you on the screen. And then I will show you the wheel, how to set it up with the colors that you want. I made sure I picked a pattern that required three colors so we could use all three of these. So let's go over to my computer for a minute. Okay, this is the pattern that we will be hopefully achieving today. I will be changing the colors. I want this black part, the solid line, to be yellow, and then I want blue and green to be this part. So whenever I see black on the loom template, I'm going to make mine yellow. When I see red, I will make it blue, and when I see yellow, I will make it green. And hopefully we come out with something that looks like this. I also wanted to mention that I got a lot of suggestions as to how to keep cords from tangling and things like that. Most of the suggestions were maybe you could try this or maybe you could try that. So I don't think that anybody really actually tried those things first. And I did try some of them and then I gave up on most of them because no matter what, like I even thought to myself if I somehow weighted down each little cord that it would maybe hold it in place better. But what I thought would happen once I tried that did indeed happen. You know, some said, you know, put something to weight it down. But then I thought all these weighted things are going to get tangled up. But then somebody said that they thought they saw somebody roll the cords up and then use like a bobby pin. So I tried with paper clips. And then somebody else said like little clips. The thing is that no matter what, it still wants to tangle. I, I don't know. Just trying to put something on the end of every cord 
the 16 chords, that in itself was a pain in the ass. And then you have to constantly stop to let more out. No, did not like. Another thing is that someone said maybe I could number the loom. The thing is with that, though, is the numbers would make absolutely no sense once you just set up the loom because you're weaving all over the place. So I don't know how numbers would help me at all but if you think putting numbers on the loom would help you you go ahead and do that so what i'm going to do now is just aim you down and i'm going to show you how i'm going to set up the loom and then i'm just going to start weaving again do go watch the video on how to make your loom and also the first video on how to weave I'm not going to be going through everything every time I do a video, so you need to go refer back to those. But for now, well, let's just open this stuff up here. I'm hoping it's not like way stiff. Really pretty colors. It's going to be way stiff. Comes out from the center. You know, that might not be too bad. I hate the fact that it's this curly because I predict more tangling however it's slippery it's just like when i did the weaving on the eight notch loom with plarn when i cut up the grocery bags and i weaved with that that was my best weaving experience up to that point because the plastic just slid so i think this might be okay so let's aim the camera down and get started let's start by looking at the template we are going to need eight strands of yellow and four strands of blue and four strands of green so let me get those cut I'm not going to cut too long I would say about 12 inches each I have my strands all cut what a tangled mess this is going to be and I'm going to make my knot I'll just try to bring the knot as close to the end as I can do I have all my little pieces here Okay, the cutting the strands and the setting up the loom, I think, are the difficult parts. Now, am I even going to be able to push this through? Let's see, I want it on this side. I'm quite sure I shall be able to. There, and that'll stay. Good. Now, we're going to look at the template. And I know I want to start at the top. I'm just going to pick any slot, and I'm going to put blue and green blue and green doesn't matter which one you grab I think those are gonna stay all right next I'm skipping skipping and then I'm doing green blue so skip skip green and blue now I'm going to go skip skip yellow yellow skip skip yellow yellow and then skip, skip, yellow, yellow. Skip, skip, yellow, yellow. If I find they're sliding out, I could make my notches a little deeper. But I think plastic to plastic might be hard to keep these in place. You could always try a cardboard loom. Now, after that, we want green, blue. So I go skip, skip, green, and now I want blue next to that guy. And like I said, don't worry what's going over each other at this point. Doesn't matter. And now I'm going to go skip, skip, blue, green. Skip, skip, blue, and green. Now it's going to be skip, skip, yellow. Skip, skip, yellow, and yellow. Don't know if this shit's gonna work. <laughs> and then skip, skip, yellow, and yellow. Oh, this is the back side. What fun. Okay, we no longer need our template. Well, we do want to look at it just to see again where we start. So we're going to start where there is a blue, green, skip, skip, green, blue. So this is our top right up here. And that's how we're going to start. So now the way it works for all the looms that are 32 notch when you're working with a 16 strand, well at least for the, the patterns that we're doing, find the ones that correspond, top and bottom. I'm going to take the top right 
and bring it down to the right side of these two. Now I'm going to take, and I'm going to use my right hand because that works better for me. I make sure that I'm untangled first. Now I'm going to take the cord to the furthest left of those three and bring it up to the left of the remaining cord up here. Now we just turn to the next two. So we're dealing with these two and these two. So I take the top right and I bring it down to the right of the two that were already there. Now I take the bottom left and move it up to the left of the one that was left. Remaining, I should say. And we're turning. Yeah, I have a feeling these are not going to want to stay in place, and that's going to be an issue. <sighs> I would need probably a better kind of loom. Or I would probably have to make the notches deeper. I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to do just a little bit with you, and then I'm going to go work on this all by my lonesome so I can get it done. All right. Again, I'm working with these two and these two right here. So top right, down to the right of the two at the bottom. Bottom left, up to the left of the one that remains. And we turn. And we get all these curly cues out of the way. Now we're working with these two and these two. Top right, down to the right of the two down here. Bottom left, and up to the left of this one that's remaining. And we just keep doing that. Now there will be times that you think you've made a mistake because you'll have some spaces that are one slit or three slits. That happens during the course of turning around. When you get back to the beginning, it will be all correct. Or it should be at least, where you have two slots in between each two cords. <laughs> Holy man, that scared me. Oh my God, it's for my mother. And I'm just going to continue on my merry way. I'm going to go plop myself down on my mother's couch in front of her TV. And I'm just going to, it won't take me long. When I'm doing this and I'm in a zone, I'll, you know, get this done pretty quick. And then I will show you what we have. Oh, do remember, every time you stop, Put a paper clip or something to tell you where you are starting because you are never going to remember. I am back and my cords were getting short and I started taking them off the loom and then I realized maybe you'd want to see me take them off the loom. So when you're done, you just pull all your strands off the loom and you pull it through and then you tie a crazy knot. I will tie a knot, but look. Now, I'm sad that the blue and green, where are you? The blue and green don't really look different. They're so similar in color, but it's still very pretty. This would make an awesome dog leash. Or, um, again, straps for a tote. But let me just tie this knot here so I can talk. And I'll talk to you about this project a little bit. Very sturdy. I love the, I can't remember if this was called the, the striped or the spiral. I think this was the striped. I would try some different colors next time. But I do like it very much. Now, as for working with this stuff for a loom, challenging in some ways, not challenging in others. I would definitely try to find a way to straighten some of this out first. I would cut my strips and I even think if you put it between like two towels and hold it and press it with an iron on top of the towel, that might straighten that. That would be very helpful. But even though it was all curly, it was very easy to pull the strands apart. So that part was good. My challenge was keeping it on the loom. So I definitely would want to do something different. Even though I did cut some of the slots deeper, it's just very slippery on there. So there's got to be a way, and I'm not sure necessarily that cardboard would solve that problem, but if you don't want to do the weaving on a loom like this, and I can almost bet that none of you want to do it after you see what I go through. 
This stuff, a dollar for three at your local Dollar Tree, this is great for even just braiding, or you could crochet with it or knit with it. I bet it wouldn't be too hard to knit or crochet with this stuff, or even just braiding it to make a dog leash or straps for a bag or for whatever you want, a cool belt. I will indeed be doing more on this loom, or if I wear this one out, I might have to make another one, and on the eight notch loom also. I'm just gonna keep trying different things. I still wanna try yarn on this one because I think the yarn will hold really well in the notches, and I think it'll be big enough to show off a pattern. So please subscribe if you like seeing me work with this stuff and struggle through it. <laughs> And I will be back with more soon. Bye! I will be trying some more stuff with that twine. I think it will be pretty handy in some ways. I might play with sewing it or gluing it. I don't know yet. Give me some ideas.